Welcome to God's Big Picture, where we are tracing the story of the whole Bible from Genesis to Revelation, as we see how the one story of God's plan to save the world through Jesus Christ unfolds. So far, we have covered Genesis 1 and 2, and we'll now look at Genesis chapter 3 under the title, The Perished Kingdom. Let's dive in and see what happens. Genesis 3 begins with a sad story of how God's perfect creation is spoiled. See what we are told in Genesis chapter 3 verse 1. Now, the serpent was more crafty than any other beast in the field that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God actually say you shall not eat of any tree of the garden? In our previous study, we saw that God exercised his rule in the garden through his word, and Satan, in the form of a serpent, directs his attack on God's word. He does three key things here. He starts by distorting God's word and making it sound harsher than it is. Did God actually say, you shall not eat of any tree in the garden? Eve puts him right by explaining that he had been forbidden to eat from only one tree. We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said, you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. Satan does not give up and thus goes further to question God's word. Verse 4, you will not surely die, Satan says. Here Satan even goes further to distort God's motives by telling Eve, God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. And by the end of the story, the tactics of the devil worked. And we read in verse 6. So, when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was delight in the eyes and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took its fruit and ate. And she also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate. Everything that could have gone wrong, went wrong. Now, one might ask, what is so terrible about what has just happened? What is wrong with eating a bit of fruit? The answer to such questions is, it is wrong because God told them not to. And that by eating it, it was total disobedience and disregard to God's rule. In other words, Adam and Eve were saying that from now on, God, we want to be lawmakers in the world, setting the standards by which we will live. We don't need you. If you like, they were shoving off God. They were saying that they want to be in charge. They don't want God in charge. And they were saying to God, no, to your rule. The consequence of their actions were huge, for it led to broken relationships between God and man, he led to broken relationship between human beings and creation and between men and women. What follows from here is spread of sin and death. You only need to turn to Genesis chapter 4 all the way to Genesis chapter 11, which clearly shows what happens next. Just next page, Genesis chapter 4, Cain kills his brother Abel. Genesis chapter 5, we see Descendants of Adam being described, who he had described with one phrase, and he died, and the other one died, and he died. Death comes into the world. And you continue reading in Genesis chapter 6 to Genesis chapter 9, where we find men began to multiply, and their sin and wickedness grew. And thus God sets a flood, which we read in Genesis chapter 6, verse 5 and 6. The Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. And that every intention of their thoughts, of their heart, was only evil continually. And the Lord regretted that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him to his heart. We then get to Genesis chapter 11, and we see a people who have a sinful desire to exalt themselves and to create out of their own kingdom a dependent tree of God. And what then happens is that God judges them by frustrating their sinful desires, by dividing them one with another. The perfected kingdom that God had established in Genesis chapter 1 and 2 is now nothing but destroyed. It is destroyed by sin. One important thing though, the Bible could have ended here, but it didn't. God is a gracious God 
And thus, we see the story of the Bible continues, as we will see in our next video. For now, we see what sin does to God's perfected kingdom. But also, we ought to be encouraged by the hope that is seen in the midst of God's judgment in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, where we read, this is what God says, I will put an enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. Here is the hope to hold on to, even as we continue to see God's big picture. Until next time, it's goodbye for now.